Well, hello. Welcome back to the Tail Three Cabins. Uh, we're going to pick up right where we left off with the pole barn from last week. We were just uh, getting ready to put the trusses on, so we're going to check that out in about a second. I just want to make a little comment. I got a couple people asking about my garden this year. Want to know if I could do a full video on it, and it's really too late in the season for that now. We're already harvesting most of the stuff. But just a brief overview of the garden. It went pretty well this year. I think it was actually a little bit better last year for tomatoes than this year. We got a bumper crop of cucumbers. I had mentioned that I was going to cover up my uh, water tank that I used for rainwater off of the garden shed over there. And I ended up just planting a bunch of pole beans around it and just kind of surrounding the tank with pole beans rather than putting some kind of decorative wood around it. So that worked out okay. It's filled in really nice and the beans are starting to come in. I did try to do one of those little irrigation systems that you might see at the garden centers with all those little small tubes that they use. And I thought that the gravity pressure from my tank would be enough to disperse that water through all the small tubes and it just didn't work out. I was going to do a separate video on that, but um, those systems really need to be under pressure like under a normal spigot off your house. So, so that's what's happening with the garden. Let's go check on the progress with the pole barn and see how far we get today. Come check it out. My last video, all the posts were set, the sidewalls were put up, and blocking was put in for the trusses. This took a little over a, a few hours for them to do, and now we're getting ready to get those trusses up and continue working on the pole barn. Just a reminder, this is 24 by 32 with a 12 inch sliding door up front, a main door on the side, and one window. One thing I took notice prior to them putting this up is they put some jade channel on there for the metal siding that's going to go on eventually ahead of time. These trusses were pre-made. They have an overhang built in about a foot. You can see right by his hand there. In the case of this pole barn, the trusses are going up four feet on center. This might fluctuate depending on the size of your pole barn and just how beefy your structure is going to be. They could go as much as eight feet on center.
this will be the last truss going up and notice that that J channel is pre-mounted on there also. Now the horizontal bracing on the walls was called girts and these are going to be called purlins, 2x4s also and those are also 2 feet on center. This will give the necessary support for the metal roofing. The excess height of the posts are getting trimmed off now, even with the roof line. You might think at this point you could start ditching some of the bracing that's up on the sides, but if you kind of notice the way the structure is still giving a little bit back and forth as they're moving along the roof here, that those braces still are going to come into play until we start putting the metal siding up to kind of make it more rigid. Just like the sides, the gable ends are going to have a foot overhang. Really just finishing up a few details, cutting off some of the loose ends here, and we're almost done framing the roof.
Well, they get ready to tack in the fascia board for the gable ends. I want you to take notice on that J channel that I mentioned earlier. It's really got an extra slot built into it. I believe it's called a J and J channel, and that'll tuck in the sheet metal siding underneath on the bottom, and then it's got a slot on the top for putting the soffit material into. So the framing of the roof is all completed and now there's a drip edge material going on just prior to putting on the vapor barrier. So I'll try and stop in there just Now you can go with a uh, insulation material, maybe about a half inch, three quarter inches thick, four by eight sheets to put up on the roof, and then some sort of Tyvex on top of that. But I'm just going to be putting up this rolled. It's kind of rubberized. It's got some ribs throughout it to kind of give it some strength, and it's just tacked in. It's going to help prevent any moisture buildup from temperature changes, uh, sweating on the inside of the roof. guys are working up above, this gentleman down below is getting ready to prepare the sheet metal. And they do a little trick here that I didn't realize and it's kind of ingenious. I'll talk more about that when the metal roof is going up. Okay, so these guys are taking a break. I checked the timestamp on that video and it was 12.20 p.m. in the afternoon. And I checked the timestamp when I first started in the morning dropping those pills into the ground and it was 7.30. They're just about five hours into it and they're doing an amazing amount of work. It is possible that they could complete this thing in one day. Why don't you check it out next week and see what happens. I know when I worked on this cabin back here, I could have used these guys helping me out. It took me 14 months to do this cabin. I did have help from time to time from some friends and family. Definitely wouldn't have been 14 months, that's for sure. Maybe 14 days. So we're going to pick up next week with the metal sheeting. Let's see if they can complete this thing in one day or if they run into any stumbling blocks. So thank you for watching. Hope you subscribe and enjoy these videos. Hit that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out and keep an eye on us. Take care everybody.